This is Charlie Mo here. I hope that you're doing well tonight and that your day was good or at least not too stressful. Tonight I have a short story that I wrote for you guys. It's kind of inspired by Rhone Factory, Stardew Valley, those kind of games. Whenever I play those games, I always just have this nice warm feeling inside me. As you go about your day cooking, making friends, taking care of your animals, growing your own food, flirting with the townspeople. <laughs> and I hope that this cozy story can kind of capture that same feeling. I'm going to read it twice. I'm going to read it first at normal speed, and then again a bit slower. So I hope that like this will help you relax and fall into a deep, peaceful sleep, or at least unwind a little bit after a long, hard day. This is the whispered version of the video, but I am also making a soft-spoken version, which will be posted on my channel. My channel is still new, so any likes, comments, subscribes, any interaction at all is very appreciated to help me grow. So please make yourself comfortable. Relax. If you would like, please close your eyes. And here we go. Today was a day just like any other. I woke up to a warm weight on my chest and the sound of a droning hum filling the otherwise quiet air. I cracked my eyes open to see Beatrice my pet bumble kit, already awake and enjoying the patch of sunlight that had filtered in through the windows and now enveloped my bed. Her front four tiny paws kneaded into my chest, her pleased hum increasing in volume ever so slightly as she realized I was awake. Soon she would be fed, her tiny belly full of milk and sweet honey. I chuckled and ran my fingers down her back enjoying the soft touch of her downy black and yellow fur. Beatrice had been created by mistake when an unsuspecting bumblebee had flown into the local alchemist lab while he was attempting to create a chimera. Instead of the ferocious lion creature he'd hoped to create, the scientist had ended up with this mix of a cuddly kitty and a buzzing bee. Not exactly great for it, protecting his lab, but perfect as a house pet. As usual, I felt bad kicking Beatrice off her seat in my chest. But the day had already begun and there was work to be done. The ranch wasn't going to run itself after all. The kid mewed in protest as I stirred. Her gossamer wings beat rapidly to lift her round little body up into the air when I finally gathered the energy to sit up, stretching and squinting in the morning sun. Beatrice's disappointment from having her cozy morning disturbed, quickly morphed into excitement as I made my way to the cupboard where the honey and tea supplies were kept. I filled the kettle with water, placed it on the stove to start my morning tea, the clink and clatter of the metal seeming to wake up the house as more sunlight shone through the open window. Ignacio, I held my hand to the stove and softly whispered the fire incantation, using just enough energy to light the stove beneath the kettle flame wrapped around the bottom of the kettle, tiny flames dancing and licking up the side of the black metal. The water would still need a while to heat up. During this time, I went about the rest of my routine. I threw on a fluffy green robe, wrapping it closer to me as I stepped into the nippy morning air. I would head to the coop first for eggs, then gather my milk afterwards. Inside the coop, the toy cockatrices greeted me with cheerful clucks. The greedier ones already waiting by the bag where I kept their feed. I gave each one a little scratch on their feathery head and a quick rub on their scaly back before giving in to their demands and spreading their seed on the ground as evenly as I could. As I scarfed down their breakfast, I picked two eggs from their nests and put them in my rope pocket. The rest of the eggs I set aside to sell at the weekly market. Despite the cold, the cows and sheep were outside already enjoying the morning dew flavor on the grass. 
just like the cockatrices, I took my time to greet each one. Even if they couldn't speak to tell me, I knew they appreciated it. The sheep had all been sheared just last week, so the only chore left was to milk the cows. All three of my girls cooperated beautifully, content to continue munching on the grass as I worked on them, making sure they were trained and comfortable. Just like the eggs, I set aside some of the milk for breakfast in a small glass bottle and put the rest in a cooling box to be sold later. The milk was a beautiful creamy color, promising a rich flavor that both Beatrice and I would surely love. I took pride in the quality of the product my animals produced, and they never failed to disappoint. Inside, Bee buzzed close behind me as I filled her bowl with a portion of the milk and honey. It had taken a while to train her to not go for the food as I prepped it, but at least now she knew to wait while until it was on the ground to start eating. We were still working on having her on the ground while I got it ready. As Bee audibly slurped her breakfast into her mouth tube, I finished prepping my own meal. Another whispered incantation started a small flame beneath my frying pan. I sliced off a piece of bread from the loaf I'd made two nights ago and placed it on the pan along with two cracked eggs. The golden yolks looked like tiny golden suns, the rich flavor only deepening as the eggs sizzled. The kettle began whistling just as I finished cracking the eggs. I poured the steaming liquid into my favorite mug, a beautiful blue ceramic thing my best friend from my hometown had made me, and set the tea aside to let it steep. I plated my food, spooned a thick layer of honey onto the toast, and breakfast was finally done. I settled at my heavy wooden table, not bothering with a coaster or placement to protect the old worn wood, and began to plan for the day as I ate. As it turned out, there wasn't a whole lot to be done today. The animals were already taken care of, and a water spill I had set up through the garden was keeping the plants watered until harvest time. I stirred more honey into my tea as I thought of what to do. I supposed I could go fishing or maybe head to the mines for some more. As I was lost in thought, I set my spoon down for my tea, only to have Bee fly on the counter and grab it for six little paws. Hey, I shouted after her as she flew away, spoon in tow. She buzzed up and into the rafters, disappearing from view as she deposited her prize into some unknown location. I sighed and rubbed my temples. I knew for a fact that Beatrice would occasionally steal things that caught her fancy, like, say, a spoon coated in honey, and hide them somewhere up there where I couldn't take them back. Someday I would borrow a ladder from the carpenter and set up to find her cache of treasure. But Eitz made me nervous, and today was not that day. As I went to get another spoon to fix my tea, I realized with a groan that I didn't have any more spoons. B had stolen all of them. I supposed it was my fault for not cleaning each one right after use, even knowing the Bumblekit's penchant for crimes. However, I blushed as I thought to myself, perhaps this was a blessing in disguise. This would be the perfect opportunity to pay a visit to the blacksmith, or more accurately, the blacksmith's handsome apprentice, Darius, who I happened to know was in charge of manning the shop this week while his master was on an expedition into the mines. The gorgeous cutlery set I had currently had actually been a birthday gift from Darius. He would surely be able to help replace the stolen spoons. I giggled as Beatrice emerged hesitantly, blinking at me slowly from the rafters. Don't worry, little one, you're not in trouble, I called from below, laughing to myself just a little. She didn't need to know she was actually enabling my romantic dalliances. The blacksmith shop was warm, bordering on sweltering as always. He shed my jacket as I entered, greeting the boy manning the counter of a shy smile and a small hello. Darius was my age, in that awkward stage where you're just entering adulthood, but older adults still think of you as a child. But ever since he'd had his first growth spurt, he's had the frame of a sturdy adult man. If his being entrusted to watch the shop is any indication, Darius is also on his way to finally being considered a real adult. I wasn't surprised he could transcend that state so much faster than the rest of us. He's always been quiet, hardworking, and reliable. He'd been focused on taking over the shop since I met him, all those years ago when we were actually children. Perhaps his focus is why he hadn't even noticed my interest in him until quite recently. I was fine with that, though. His single-mindedness, even if it often came to his own detriment, was charming to me. 
that's why we put two and two together. He seemed to feel the same way about me. At least I think he did. True to character, he never acknowledged his feelings outright, but the warm smile that seemed to spread involuntarily across Darius' normally stoic face when he saw me spoke volumes. Hey, Ella, Darius greeted as I approached the counter. were 
were still young and somewhat soft to the touch, but these would do just fine for cooking. Thank the gods, the soup could be saved. Darius was overjoyed with the herbs and apologized profusely when I told him that I'd have to go outside of town to procure them. I knew he worried when I left the safety of the town walls like that, but he and I both knew that I was tough enough to do just fine. Besides, how could I have stood by when there was soup at stake? I jokingly suggested he invite me for dinner to make it up to me, and to my surprise he obliged, even if his cheeks seemed to burn a scarlet red when he extended the invitation. We ate at the shop in the tiny apartment nestled in the back, where Darius's boss usually lived. I helped with the prep best I could, cutting the potatoes and chopping the herbs with the sharpest knives I had ever used. So sharp I wouldn't have been surprised if they were forged that day. Darius manned the bubbling pot, stirring the broth in slow, churning circles. When the soup was done, we broke in the new spoons, digging into the creamy broth. The savory, salty flavor enveloped my tongue, meshing perfectly with the tender chicken, and yes, especially the fresh moonflower. Between the two of us, I swear we finished enough soup to feed a tavern. I stayed late, caught up in the delicious food, and just enjoying our time together. Darius, unable to stop thinking about his work for very long, tried to show me how the bellows worked, and I, in turn, tried to teach him a simple fire spell. Neither of us were very successful, but it was just nice to be together. Finally, as much as I wanted to stay forever, I had to head home. Tomorrow would be another busy day, and I had to be up early as always. Darius, ever the gentleman, walked me home, draping his coat around my shoulders when a chilly breeze rolled in. The warmth of his skin in the blacksmith shop enveloped me as he did so. The leathery fabric smelled like smoke. When we got to my house, Darius made sure to tell me to say hi to Beatrice for him. I offered for him to come in and say hello himself, but for some reason entering a lady's house so late at night seemed to make him nervous. Nonetheless, I had to return his jacket before sending him on his way. As I peeled it off to return, a blacksmith's apprentice leaned in, and, well, a lady doesn't kiss and tell. My lips were still warm as I closed the door behind me, my heart fluttering and a giddy smile spread across my face. Beatrice slowly buzzed over, landing in front of me and yawning even as she rubbed against my leg. I'll duck it out from whatever it is a bumble kid does all day. Darius says hi, I giggled as she droned her familiar. I slept soundly and peacefully. Today had been a good day, a wonderful day even. Even with the impending cold of winter, the blissful days of spring seemingly unreachable, I was confident that there were many more good days to come. Today was a day just like any other. I woke up to a warm weight on my chest and the sound quiet air. I cracked my eyes open to see Beatrice, my pet bumble kit, already awake and enjoying the patch of sunlight that had filtered in through the windows and now enveloped my bed. Her front four tiny paws kneaded into my chest, her pleased hum increasing in volume ever so slightly as she realized I was awake. Soon she would be fed her tiny belly full of milk and sweet honey. I chuckled and ran my fingers down her back, enjoying the soft touch of her downy black and yellow fur. Beatrice had been created by mistake when an unsuspecting bumblebee had flown into the local alchemist's lab while he was attempting to create a chimera instead of the ferocious lion creature he'd hoped to create. The scientist had ended up with this mix of a cuddly kitty and a buzzing bee. Not exactly great for protecting his lab, but perfect as a house pet. As usual, I felt bad kicking Beatrice off her seat on my chest, but the day had already begun, and there was work to be done. The ranch wasn't going to run itself after all. The kit mewed in protest as I stirred. Her gossamer wings beat rapidly to lift her round little body up into the air when I finally gathered the energy to sit up, stretching and squinting in the morning sun. Beatrice's disappointment from having her cozy morning disturbed quickly morphed into a 
excitement as I made my way to the cupboard where the honey and tea supplies were kept. I filled the kettle with water and placed it on the stove to start my morning tea, the clink and clatter of the metal seeming to wake up the house as more sunlight shone through the open window. Ignatio, I held my hand to the stove and softly whispered the fire incantation, using just enough energy to light the stove beneath the kettle. The orange flame wrapped the bottom of the kettle, tiny flames dancing and licking up the side of the black metal. The water would still need a while to heat up. During this time, I went about the rest of my morning routine. I threw on a fluffy green robe, wrapping it closer to me as I stepped into the nippy morning air. I would head to the coop first for eggs, then gather my milk afterwards. Inside the coop, the toy cockatrices greeted me with cheerful clucks. The greedier ones, already waiting by the bag where I kept their feed, I gave each one a little scratch on their feathery head and a quick rub on their scaly back before giving in to their demands and spreading the seed on the ground as evenly as I could. As they scarfed down their breakfast, I picked two eggs from their nests and put them in my robe pocket. The rest of the eggs I set aside to sell at the weekly market. Despite the cold, the cows and sheep were outside already, perhaps enjoying the morning dew flavor on the grass. Just like the cockatrices, I took my time to greet each one. Even if they couldn't speak to tell me, I just knew they appreciated it. The sheep had all been sheared just last week, so the only chore left was to milk the cows. All three of my girls cooperated as I worked on them, making sure they were trained and comfortable. Just like the eggs, I set aside some of the milk for breakfast in a small glass bottle and put the rest in a cooling box to be sold later. The milk was a beautiful, creamy color, promising a rich flavor that both Beatrice and I would surely love. I took pride in the quality of the products my produced, and they never failed to disappoint. Inside, Bee buzzed close behind me as I filled her bowl with the portion of the milk and honey. It had taken a while to train her not to go directly for her food as I prepped it, but now she at least knew to wait until it was on the ground to start eating. We were still working. slurped her breakfast into her mouth tube. I finished prepping my own meal. Another whispered incantation started a small flame beneath my frying pan. I sliced off a piece of bread from the loaf I had made two nights ago and placed it on the pan along with the two cracked eggs. The golden yolks looked like two tiny golden suns. The rich color as the eggs sizzled. The kettle began whistling just as I finished cracking the eggs. I poured the steaming liquid into my favorite mug, a beautiful blue ceramic thing my best friend from my hometown had made me, and set the tea aside to let it steep. I plated my food, spooned a thick layer toast, and breakfast was finally done. I settled in at my heavy wooden table, not bothering with a coaster or a placemat to protect the old, worn wood, and began to plan for the day as I ate. As it turned out, there wasn't a whole lot to be done today. The animals were already taken care of, and a water spell I had set up through the garden was keeping the plants watered until harvest time. I stirred more honey into my tea as I thought of what to do. I 
supposed to kind of go fishing or maybe head to the mines for some ore. As I was lost in thought, I set my spoon down for my tea, only to have B fly on the counter and grab it with her six little paws. Hey, I shouted after her as she flew away. Spoon and toe, she buzzed up and into the rafters, disappearing from view as she deposited her prize into some unknown location. I sighed and rubbed my temples. I knew for a fact that Beatrice would occasionally steal things that caught her fancy, like, say, a spoon coated in honey and hide them somewhere couldn't just take them back. Someday I would borrow a ladder from the carpenter and set up to find her cache of treasure. But Ides made me nervous, and today was not that day. As I went to get another spoon to fix my tea, I realized with a groan that I didn't have any more spoons. B had stolen all of them. I supposed it was my fault for not cleaning each one right after use, even knowing the Bumble Kid's penchant for crimes. However, I blushed as I thought to myself, perhaps this was a blessing in disguise. This would be a perfect opportunity to pay a visit to the blacksmith, or more accurately, the blacksmith's handsome apprentice, Darius, who I happened to know was in charge of man shop this week while his master was on an expedition into the mines. The gorgeous cutlery set I had currently had actually been a birthday gift from Darius. He would surely be able to help replace the stolen spoons. I giggled as Beatrice emerged hesitantly, blinking at me slowly from the rafters. Don't just a little. She didn't need to know that she was actually enabling my romantic dalliances. The blacksmith shop was warm, bordering on sweltering, as always. I immediately shed my jacket as I entered, greeting the boy manning the counter with a shy smile and a small hello. Darius was my stage where you're just entering adulthood, but older adults still think of you as a child. But ever since he had his first growth spurt, he's at the frame of a sturdy adult man. If his being entrusted to watch the shop is any indication, Darius is finally on his way to being considered a real adult. I wasn't surprised he could transcend that state so much faster than the rest of us. He's always been quiet, hardworking, and reliable. He'd been focused on taking over the shop since I met him, all those years ago when we were actually children. Perhaps this focus is why he hadn't noticed my interest in him until quite recently. I was fine with that, though. His single-mindedness, even if it often came to his own detriment, was charming to me. It helped that when Darius finally put two and two together. He seemed to feel the same way about me. At least I think he did. True to character, he never acknowledged his feelings outright, but the warm smile that seemed to spread almost involuntarily across Darius's normally stoic face when he saw me spoke volumes. Hey, Ella, Darius greeted as I approached the counter. How are you? What brings you here? Remember that cutlery set you gave me on my birthday? I asked. Darius nodded in affirmation. While a certain bubble kitten has taken to stealing the spoons, unfortunately, could I order a replacement or two if it's not too much trouble? That little troublemaker, Darius snorted a low laugh, shaking his head. She likes spoons now, huh? He loved Beatrice almost more than I did. I often joked about having to hide her when he visited so she didn't steal her away from me. Just
just after they've been covered in honey. My own fault, really. I laughed. How much do I owe you? No charge. It's fine, Darius insisted, already reaching into a nearby cupboard for the appropriate tools. They were a gift, after all. I need to give you something, I insisted. It's my fault Pete got to them in the first place. Darius paused for a moment, thinking, Actually, if you do want to repay me, do you have any moonflower herbs in your garden? I'm out, but that would be great in the soup that I'm making tonight. I do, actually, I nodded. I had just planted some weeks ago. What luck. I'll go gather them, then meet you back here tonight. Is that okay? Perfect, Darius said. Even as we spoke, he was already at work, intent on completing the cutlery as soon as possible. Diligent as always, it made my heart flutter. I'll see you tonight. I waved as I left, shivering as I stepped away from the warmth of the shop and into the outside air. I'll see you tonight. I waved as I left, shivering as I stepped away from the warmth of the shop and into the outside air. Autumn nearly at its peak. I thought it would be a little early, but still okay to harvest just a bit of the moonflower. However, when I got to the garden, I discovered the green leaves meant to be picked off the plant and consumed were still tiny, bright green, and not yet matured. If you tried to use these for cooking, the flavor would be bitter and overall just unpleasant. Thankfully, had a backup plan. Just on the outskirts of town, there was a patch of wild moonflowers. With any luck, those would be ready for picking. Perhaps Darius' soup could still be saved. B was sleeping soundly on the bed when I briefly returned home for supplies. Undisturbed, even as I laced on my boots, gathered my skirt, and grabbed my basket for foraging. The bumble kid stretched languidly and made a funny buzz snore sound as I headed out once more, entirely unbothered. How nice it must be to be bee. It was uncharacteristically busy outside of town. Squirrels and small rodents could be seen scurrying over the forest trees in a last-ditch attempt to gather food before the impending of birds would pass overhead occasionally, migrating to somewhere warmer before the air got even chillier. I even saw a pair of wyverns tailing one group of particularly loud geese, probably intent on catching their dinner when they inevitably got up to the unfortunate things. It made me a little sad to think that in just a few weeks, all this life would be laid to rest for the still winter months. I always dreaded the season. There was hardly anything that could be grown, and my animals hated to be cooped up inside. But on the other hand, winter was great for exploring the mines. It could be dangerous down there if you unearthed a skeleton or encountered a group of undead. But that was nothing that a well-placed fire spell or sharpened sword could and the payoff was always worth it. Gorgeous gemstones, shining minerals, even useful ore that could be used to strengthen equipment, or gifted to handsome, hard-working blacksmith apprentices. Coincidentally, as I dreamed of exploring the mines, a group of goblins passed on the trail. The tiny, almost childlike humanoids waved as they passed, each carrying a sack almost equal to their body size. I caught a glimpse of their spoils as they passed, silver ore glinting in the sunlight as it peeked through the top of its container. All of the goblins were covered in a shiny sheen of sweat, patches of dirt and scrapes marring their green skin. I paid, I prayed they would be paid handsomely for their efforts at the upcoming market when they sold the fruits of their labor. Not long after passing the group, I finally came to the river, the 
were still young and somewhat soft to the touch, but these would do just fine for cooking. Thank the gods the soup could be saved. Darius was overjoyed with the herbs and apologized profusely when I told him I'd had to go outside of town to procure them. I knew he worried when I left the safety of the town walls like that, but he and I both knew that I was tough enough do just fine. Besides, how could I have stood by when there was soup at stake? I jokingly suggested he invite me for dinner to make it up to me, and to my surprise, he obliged, even if his cheeks seemed to burn a scarlet red when he extended the invitation. We ate at the shop, and the tiny apartment nestled in the back his boss usually lived. I helped with the prep best I could, cutting the potatoes and chopping the herbs with the sharpest knives I'd ever used. So sharp, I wouldn't have been surprised if they'd been forged that day. Darius manned the bubbling pot, stirring the broth in slow, churning circles. When the soup was done, we broke in the new spoon digging into the creamy broth. The savory, salty flavor enveloped my tongue, meshing perfectly with the tender chicken, and yes, especially the fresh mown flour. Between the two of us, I swear we ate enough soup to feed a tavern. I stayed late, caught up in the delicious food, and just enjoying our time together. Darius, unable to stop thinking about his work for very long, tried to show me how the bellows worked, and I, in turn, tried to teach him a simple fire spell. Neither of us were very successful, but it was nice to just be together. Finally, as much as I wanted to stay forever, I had to head home. Tomorrow would be another busy day and I had to be up early as always. Darius, ever the gentleman, walked me home, draping his coat around my shoulders when a chilly breeze rolled in. The warmth of his skin in the blacksmith shop enveloped me as he did so, and the leathery fabric smelled like smoke. When we got to my house, Darius made sure to tell me to say hi to Beatrice for him. I offered for him to come in and say hello himself, but for some reason, entering a lady's house so late at night seemed to make him nervous. Nonetheless, I had to return his jacket before sending him on his way. As I peeled it off to return, the blacksmith's apprentice leaned in doesn't kiss and tell. My lips were still warm as I closed the door behind me, my heart fluttering and a giddy smile spread across my face. Beatrice slowly buzzed over, landing in front of me and yawning even as she rubbed against my leg, all tuckered out from whatever it is a bumble kid does all day. Darius says hi, I giggled as she droned her familiar humper. That night, I slept soundly and peacefully. Today had been a good day, a wonderful day even. Even with the impending cold of winter, the blissful days of spring seemingly unreachable, I was confident there were still many more good days to come. I hope that helped you fall asleep just a little. Thanks so much for watching and have a good night.